Okay, here we are, and I'm back. Today we're gonna hear to talk about Baywatch. I just wanted to mention one thing. I found an episode of Baywatch, which I think was really good. I think it's probably their best episode. It was their Beach Boys episode. Why? Well, after watching a German imported version of Baywatch, there's nothing cut out of the Baywatch episode, I don't think. Maybe there probably is, but there's more in this episode than anything else. The Little Richie episode, you saw a portion of him at the beginning for a very, very short amount of time. I don't even know who he is, so don't ask me. I just know this is pretty big with the show. Little Richie got edited out. Um, his episode was so edited that it was about 30 minutes for the episode. Usually an episode is 41, 42 minutes. That's how bad the editing was. Um, Baywatch touches on a variety of subjects from, you know, homeless, people people being homeless, to um, the Special Olympics, to people that are blind. I think it was Mila Kunis, I think it was her. She was a young kid, probably five, six years old. And she was um, one of the kids that was playing someone that was blind. I thought it was a, a very good performance, too, as an actor. And that was just that. But unfortunately, you know, a lot of shows like Blacklist can't do it. Well, that's over with now, but use it as an example. You couldn't have those type of episodes I just mentioned in a Blacklist or in NCIS, they touch up on it a little bit. Baywatch was, I think, known for trying to throw it out there. Everyone says it's just about the woman. Well, why did they have a Special Olympics episode then? Or why did they have other things? I think they did a pretty good job. And, I, and Hasselhoff had to have been um, on board with all this, too. So you can you have to thank him, too, because if he wasn't on board with it, he would have never approved. Okay. And that means there wouldn't have been those episodes. Okay. I'm going to go to the episodes I watched. I, I knew the Beach Boys episodes was in episode, was in season six, but I had no idea it was at the, on the first disc. <laughs> I hadn't watched it in so long. Oh, shit. I gotta make sure I didn't skip the other episodes I was supposed to talk about, too. So, alright. Click B Watch. Episode Guide. Um, okay. Let's go to the episode, um, season six. Oh, no, let's go to season five first. I want to make sure I talked about it on here so far. I probably did it already on, it's probably in another video right on there, all right. Johnny, I think I talk about, talked about that. And if I didn't, I didn't. I skip a couple episodes, but I'm pretty sure I didn't skip it. I, I like to talk about this stuff because I think it's important. And you know, the more episodes you talk about, the more you don't have to do unboxings, especially in my case. Okay. This is where we get to the good part. Um, these This episode's a long description. Trapped beneath the sea. Oh no, no, I know what I screwed up on now. So it was, I started off on this. Trapped beneath the sea, part one. Neely Capshaw, the wholesome psycho lifeguard who tried to frame Matt for sexual harassment, which is a completely different actor than the previous season. I don't know why they that she bailed out of it. I mean, she must have got a really good gig because she was guaranteed to be in, in Baywatch for a while. She, it, it seemed like it, the, need, the whole Neely character. Isn't it so sick that Mitch actually tries to marry this woman too? It, it's not just the age difference, but it's just, yeah. Neely can all right, so, Matt, frame Matt sexual harassment, arrives back at Baywatch for a job as a switchboard operator and is greeted with a hostile reception from everyone. Um, okay, so basically I'm not going to describe this episode anymore. She got away with it without any real um, consequences. To tell you the truth, Matt went off to France, I believe. That's where his parents lived. It did, That was just, you know, it doesn't make any... It doesn't make any sense to me how they can just both walk away walk away, and nothing happens. Essentially, yes, he was forced out of his job because he was accused of something. But in the end, he didn't really have to leave. And, you know, I, if I watch this show correctly, not watch this show, if I remember the show correctly, 
there was no explanation for what happened here. It was kind of just left dragging, nothing really. I mean, that kind of sucked for me, at least. Okay. Uh, all right. Then, then there was a second part. Neely and Cody try to keep the four people. That's right. We got a new guy called Cody that's on Baywatch now. To keep the four people, especially two seriously injured ones, alive on the sunken oil rig. Or did I talk about this already? Well, we're talking about it again. There was an oil... Yeah, I, I did because I mentioned the CGI. I'll say it again. CGI was so bad it was unbearable. Hot stuff. Okay. During the long, hot, drought-ridden summer day, Logan becomes jealous when Cody begins to flirt with Caroline during and after rescues. Okay. Alright, let me get this. Cody is... Alright. Also, Neely wants to break away from manning the switchboard and become a tower lifeguard. Yeah, after what she did. In which Stephanie seeks to prevent... But she doesn't really last that long. Kayla asks Hobie to become a volunteer group of the young people with the blind people. I told you about that with the blind kids. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and not, I know if it was Mila Kunis, she's not blind, but she put... She did a good job, if it's her. I will go back to that episode in a second, see if it was. And then we got Surf's Up, the Beach Boys episode. October 21st, 1995. The greatest years were in the 90s. I only wish I was older during that period. After a number of unusual circumstances occur around the beaches, including Cody and Neely rescuing two surf boys that came down with fever, an environmentalist group comes to Baywatch to protest the dumping of chemicals from the storm drains, and Mitch enlists the Beach Boys for a benefit concert. He said he was able to track down the Beach Boys because Mike Love's cousin still sends him a Christmas card. That was the most dumb thing ever, but still, it's funny. The, and and you know what? The acting was halfway decent. Like I, the acting went not halfway decent. Forgive me, it's late. The acting was really good in this episode compared to others, and I think this was probably, if I was to rate it, not just because of my favorite band. But I think it's probably the best episode that was on the whole series. I mean, you had a band that wasn't... They at least were allowed to sing most of the, the couple songs that they did. They weren't edited out. And there were actual scenes with the Beach Boys talking to people. They probably approved, it, approved of it because it was California and all that. And then the other people probably came from somewhere else and they weren't too fond of giving away the rights to their music. But And there were full Beach Boys songs in this too, which was great. Okay, got to keep talking about that. Benefit cards, it's to raise money for repairing the storm drains. Meanwhile, Stephanie's ex-husband Billy suddenly shows up. This always happens. When they're about to go out with someone else, they, the, the other person comes back. Billy suddenly turns up to much uncertainly in Caroline's w win, weariness. Also, Neely begins wooing Cody while teaching him the ropes of surfing. While teaching... Him the road, yeah, whatever. Yeah, forgive me. Surfing while well, she also confides him about how she pr she prides herself being the bad girl, persuades him to embrace his own side. What I don't understand about this episode, it cut a lousy five point five out of ten. You had a an Amer the best American band in it, you could say, of its time, and I still think it is. And it didn't get a better rating. I'm gonna see how many people looked at this episode. 132, and all it got was a 5.5? I mean, come on. I'm sorry, but that's just, you know, from... That just goes to show you, if people hate a show, they'll rate down every single episode they see. Okay, now we're going to go back to that, that episode where um, we're going to see if it was the who we thought it was. It was Mila Kunis or not. Hot stuff. Okay, um, okay, clicking on the episode, okay, she's, I'm trying to get to the, this is a new version of IMDB that shows on the, um, it, on the, um, browser now, so it's not easy to navigate like it was before, I'm trying to look at the actors, top cast, yeah, it was Mio Kunis. But it's Bonnie, and I don't know how old she was. So, 95. And you go into her profile, and she was born in 83. 
She was a 12. That's impossible. Uh, she was born in 83. This episode came out in 95. There's no way she was 12 in that episode. She looked like she was 10 or 8 or 6. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. The point is is that, that was, I thought she did great in that episode. And and for the for just being a kid, she got some serious screen time. All right, good luck to everyone, and just remember, this is important. Um, remember this: Baywatch can have a few episodes that were good, but I'd have to say about ninety nine percent of them were not. They were just good for you know nostalgic value in the in the nineties and the woman, and for for women it would be the men. All right, bye bye.